Hey guys, what's up? It's Friday at 3, I think, and my dog's about to jump on the bed. Come on, Shasi, go. It's okay, buddy. Oh, he feels sad. Shasta, you can go on the bed. Go ahead, buddy. Oh. Oh, hi, Shasta. Hello, buddy. I have to film, okay? This is my best friend right here. Okay, I gotta film now. He might be hanging out here in the background, but that's okay. You guys don't mind, right? Like, he, he can hang out here. This is Shasta, by the way. He's my five-year-old Siberian Husky. Say hello, Shasta. Yay! Good boy! Oh, big yawns, bubby. Can you come sit? We gotta talk about my weird dad, who I still love and respect, but also don't. Does that make sense? Look, he's gonna hang out with people moral support. Anytime something really messed up from childhood leaves my mouth, we'll pet the dog's head and it'll fix it right? Because that, that's how it works. Anyways, guys, this is part two to my last week's video when I was talking about weird things my dad did that in hindsight he shouldn't have been doing because I was his daughter then. I'm a trans man now, okay? Get it together. My pronouns are he, him. They're in my bio, by the way, so there's no reason to be misgendering me. I've thought of even more things that I couldn't fit in the last video that are just popping back into my head that my dad did who I really looked up to him, guys. He was my hero and I was devastated when he died of a, a brain aneurysm out of nowhere. Like, he had a brain aneurysm and it led to a stroke and they couldn't operate because he was on blood thinners because he had congestive heart failure and so if they basically if they cut into him he would just bleed because of the blood thinners and he wouldn't stop bleeding it was really bad but if they take him off the blood thinners then his heart will stop so it's like a whole thing so he, he like died and I was devastated but then in hindsight I look at my whole childhood and I look at things he's done and things my mom have done and I realized they're both terrible people that I shouldn't look up to fully okay I can look up to my dad for certain things like he was a, a good worker and he was ambitious and he was good to to others for the most part okay i can respect that but the things that he's done that were inappropriate and well things that a dad just should not be doing with his daughter or his saying about his daughter's friends and we'll get into that right now i have my little piece of paper right here so i can remember everything the first thing that i want to talk about is something that he said to me after two of my good friends left okay and now i'm not going to say these friends names but i had two friends over for a sleepover and i thought i think they were both beautiful in their own way okay one of them looks like me okay has the same body type is me but the other one was like a size i don't know 16 not not that much different okay i'm like a size 8 but i can be a size 6 sometimes it just depends i thought my friends were beautiful okay they were good people they tried their best for as long as they could to support my situation when i was a kid with my mom getting arrested and stuff um sadly we had a falling out because i'm just an, an ass but <laughs> that's a story for another time after they left my dad made this comment to me that i'll never forget and he said how come you never bring any tens around the house and i'm like huh and he's like you never bring any any girls around that are as pretty as you or even prettier you you always bring around fat girls why do you bring around fat girls and then he goes on to say do you have some complex or something like you don't want to have friends that are prettier than you and i'm like where are you getting this from and he just says everybody you bring over is like overweight i just don't understand why you don't hang out with girls that look more like you and i'm just thinking like this isn't mean girls this isn't tv i can't pick and choose who the friendliest people at my school look like. Maybe the reason I don't hang out with the skinny pretty girls is because they're not very nice, dad, okay? They're clicky and I have nothing in common with them. They're going on about Sephora and boyfriends and I like warrior cats and I'm queer, okay? I did not fit in, okay? And that's literally what I told him. I just told him that I didn't pick these friends because of the way they looked. They were just the nicest people in my class that were sitting near me at the time. I don't understand where this is coming from. What do you mean? Why am I not bringing over pretty friends? And then I went on to say, you don't think blank is pretty? Because my one friend, I just thought she was gorgeous. My dad was like, ah, well, not as pretty as you. My point is, you just never bring around anybody that's as pretty as you, and I just don't get it. And I'm like, I don't know, because it's just a coincidence. I don't know what you want from me. I've just never, like, I... <laughs> What? And why do you care what my friends look like? Why are you even looking at them like that? You're in your 50s, dude. What is this conversation? I didn't have my friends over really after that. I didn't understand that that how bad that was as a kid, that he was basically looking at teenagers that way, my own friends, and even me. Because who says to their daughter, I want you to bring around friends that are tens that are as hot as you. Why are you saying that you're kid is hot? Like, that's just, that's weird, right? And that gets me to the other thing where he would rate my out of 10 like i mentioned that in the last part but the next thing i want to mention is how he would touch it all the time that was just something that would happen throughout my childhood when my parents would come up instead of tapping your shoulder they would put their hand on your on my i don't know why even when they would like pick me up it was always hands on the butt and even when i'm older my dad would come up and like touch it sometimes and like i don't know if it's just playful like i would smack him back i don't think a dad should be swatting his kids especially when they're older like as a teenager i don't think that should have been happening i just think that's kind of weird that's something you do with your wife which is why I, I believe me and my dad were dealing with enmeshment or emotional i-n-c-e-s-t 
look that up because that's something that happens between a parent and a child if the parent is having issues with their spouse they can start looking at the kid and treating them like a spouse that's why he got jealous whenever i would go out with a guy there were some guys that he was okay with a lot of the times he just wouldn't like my partners now there were valid reasons but sometimes it just didn't make sense like why can't i come home visit you and then go see my partner like my older brother does he would get mad like you're using me as a bouncing pad it's like no i could have drove straight there and saved more time i came here because i thought it'd be nice to see my dad go there spend the night and then come back and see you more i could have just went there spent the night and went to back to college and not seen you at all dad i'm doing you a favor by coming here he was jealous okay that i wasn't gonna cuddle with him i was gonna cuddle with somebody else i was growing up and pulling away from him weird stuff weird stuff i'm petting the dog someone zoom in on the dog's face if you can and, and post because i can't i bet it looks really funny the next thing i want to talk about is like one of the worst ones okay he would comment on my teammates okay i ran cross country and track and i was pretty good i'm not gonna lie for a little bit and then i like started to suck because like i started to not care and the pressure was too much for my mom and everybody and there was stuff going on and damn it my mom got arrested my senior year and my coach still expects me to run a 19 no i can't okay my body's fatigued from dealing with my mom okay my body's fatigued from stress man and fear okay i'm just trying to survive right now i don't care if we go to state or not i just want this shit to be over <sighs> anyways that's for my old coach if he's watching I still respect you, man, but I don't I don't get why you coach like that. I don't like what you did. <laughs> my coach, he messaged me and said that he's learned a lot and is doing better with dealing with kids and their emotions and their home lives. I don't know. Believe it when I see it. Invite me out. I'll come visit during a practice. I really will. Okay, I'd love to do that. You know how runners, their jerseys are pretty tight. Like our uniforms, you have the tight tank top and then you have the booty shorts. It's, it's showing your whole body. You know what spandex shorts look like. I don't need to explain that. They're very skin tight, kind of like leotards, like gymnast wear. My dad would look at my teammates and make comments. One of the girls, the shorts were, were hiked up on her, okay? Because she was really small. So even the extra small shorts would kind of fall down so she would pull them up so they would stay up as long as possible, okay? Which makes sense. You can't really put a belt on them, they're spandex. Well, because they were pulled up, they were revealing everything. My dad was looking there for some reason and he makes the comment about my teammate that he can see her camel. I'm not gonna show my dogs, but you know what I mean. Toe. Look up what that means on Urban Dictionary. Bro, I know. And I'm just like, well, my, mine are pulled up tight too. But, but hers are really pulled up there. Like you can see everything. Why are you looking there? And there's like people around us. I don't think anybody heard. Do any of your dads do that? Make comments about how tight your friend's clothes are and stuff. Is that just mine? Please tell me I'm not alone and there's other people with weird weird dads. I never f got over that one. Cause then I'm just like, the, even when I'm like running, I'm like, so now I know that my dad's looking at all of, do all the guys, the dads there do that? Do they? I hate this place. Dad was a P E R V E R T. Say that three times fast. P E R V E R T. P E R V E R T. P E R V E R T. Okay. Another thing I want to talk about is something that I mentioned in one of my shorts. I hadn't come out to him yet where I just thought I was bisexual. Like I knew I was into girls, but I, I knew I liked guys too. But I was really into my best friend that we grew up together and we were both like out of high school and I was interested in her. I was trying to see if it was safe to come out to him. And I was being like, hey, if, if me or my brother were ever gay, what would you do? And he said, oh, well, I just couldn't stand if your brother was gay. That's just weird. I can't stand two men kissing, but you kissing a girl, I, I could deal with that. I, I don't mind seeing that. So you're okay. You're the only home homophobic if my brother would be into dudes because you don't like seeing that but you're not homophobic towards me being with a girl because you like seeing that why are you why are you envisioning me that way and why are you admitting that you get enjoyment over the idea of your own kid kissing a Anyway, I'll move on to the next one because that's all I'm going to say about that. Weird conversation. I was like 19 and dude, this is getting me into the last one that was the heaviest thing that I just I've never really got into this before, okay? I've even told this one on TikTok. I might make an actual TikTok dedicated just to this because I feel like it's important because I kind of got G-R-O-O-M-E-D'd by my dad. <sighs> so this last thing is about how me and my dad would do this thing called Pocky. Now, Pocky is like this foreign candy that you get in the foreign aisle. It's like a pretzel stick with a coating on it and they're really good. Pocky is basically code for rubbing each other's feet or back rubs and he had one foot. So basically I would rub his foot for 10 minutes. He'd rub each of mine, five each. Sometimes I'd rub his back and he would rub mine. And I would take off my shirt, but I'd still have my sports bra on. I was used to running in a sports bra for sports. So it wasn't weird for me to be in the sports bra. I didn't think anything of it. A girl might take off her shirt and be in a sports bra with her mom as they're in the living room watching 
TV. My dad was like my mom and dad, so it wasn't weird for me to do that around him. So I would literally have my shirt off and my dad would be lotioning me. I know that sounds weird and I would lotion him back and his would be off, but we'd have our pants on. Sometimes though, he would get tired of having his prosthetic leg on because it would start to hurt. He would get like phantom pain. You can look up what that is. It's a horrible thing to deal with. Sometimes I would have to rub areas of his stump where the nerve was. His big toe that wasn't there would stop itching or hurting. Like it was so weird. Phantom pain is, an, is just an interesting thing to me, but it sucks to deal with. So I'm sorry if you deal with phantom pain, but he would want to go lay back in his bed. And when he would go lay back in his bed, he would take all of his off, including the, he'd be in no undies because they would be uncomfortable with the stump in the leg and they would get caught in the stump. So he just never wears any kinds and he doesn't like tidy whities so he didn't wear those. So he'd be under the blanket without nothing. And the lights would be off and it'd just be the TV on that's mounted on the wall. And I would come in because we'd want to continue watching our shows and I would sit on top of the blanket. I would never go under it where he was never ever, but we would pocky sometimes. I would rub his feet, he'd rub mine, and I rubbed his back once, and he rubbed mine. He just kind of rolled over, and like I pulled the covers down only to reveal his back, not any further. That's stuff that you do with a wife, right? Not your 19-year-old daughter, right? But I don't think anything of it because we're just watching TV and we're just doing Pocky like we do in the living room. I'm not under the covers. I'm dressed. This ain't weird. Well, it got weird when he was rubbing my back, and his hands traveled somewhere with the lotion, and he went under my waistband and over my and like kind of rubbed them a bit like really gripped and this happened at least two different occasions that i remember maybe a third time but i think it was only twice i might be blocking out a third time but when he first did that i thought his brain went somewhere else for a second when he was massaging me and he just thought i was like my mom or something like he probably didn't even realize that he did that well they needed a second time when we pockied and i rubbed his back with the lotion and his room and then he turned around to do me and it happened again. And then after that, my dad said, you know, don't tell anyone that we do this. They might get the wrong idea. And I just thought he meant like the Pocky, like when I massage him and he massages me, people could get the wrong idea about that. I think he actually was talking about when he rubbed my, cause it was for a good like five, 10 seconds too. Like he went like, like, like imagine this is my cheek. Okay. Not these, but that. So this is my cheek. This is my dad rubbing it. You don't accidentally do that that long and it doesn't happen twice, okay? He knew what he was doing and when he said don't tell anybody, he was talking about that and I was naive and I was like, there's no way my hero who saved me from my horrible mom would purposely G-R-O-P-E my right now. That's not what's happening. I went to my room after that and I slept in there. But before I slept, I cried because I was in denial. I ended up pushing it down, everything that happened at night made excuses and I said, nah, he, he meant the, just the massaging in his room. Cause people could look at that wrong. We're just really close though. It's not weird, but it was weird. And I don't really have excuses to make for it anymore. And I just want to tell people cause I, maybe somebody else has experienced something similar and was trying to tell, make excuses for the parent, for their hero that shouldn't be a hero anymore. And I just, now I accept that my dad's not my hero and he, sh he never really should have been but it was really hard to deconstruct that because now I don't have a hero. I'm my own hero. You know, I'm here, I got here all myself. You know, I transitioned even though it's socially unsafe and I'm making money the best way I can doing what I love. And I've made my bedroom into my dream childhood room and I love it and I want to do a tour. So please comment below asking for a tour. And I'm proud of myself and I did that myself without anybody's help. I'm my own hero but my dad is not my hero anymore. And that really hurts to, and it'll be five years since I saw him die in front of my eyes on August 23rd. And it's weird, I still miss him. I love him, I love him. I have a lot of good memories too, but that one sticks out and I'll, I'll never, I never got to have a conversation with him as to why he did that. And I think if he knew that it made me feel horribly uncomfortable and he, if he knew that he made me cry I think he would have felt terrible and never done it again. I do believe that. But I wish I could ask him why he did it. Maybe his mind wandered and he thought I was my mom, but how could that happen twice? And why would it be for like 10 seconds each time? Like that's a long time to be in that area. So let me know what you guys think. Anyways, if you guys liked this video, leave a comment below. Please subscribe because it really helps. And next week will be better. I'll do a poll and we'll do like maybe a story where I got in a fight or something funnier. 
I will talk about the fight I got in with my friend's mom when the mom moves out, because I don't want them to anyone to see that video and show her and make it weird here. But I'll tell that story when it's appropriate, and I'll be fair to both parties because she has her own story, and I was kind of I was an asshole that night. That's how you grow is by making mistakes. And I'm just glad that it didn't escalate more than what it did. But anyway, if you guys like Friday at three, let me know. I saw a lot of Friday at threes. I saw I also saw Saturday at noons. I need maybe I'll just do a poll for that too, because I need to know what you guys like better. So I'm gonna do a poll for that. It's probably gonna be 50-50, and I'll be like, damn it. <laughs> but anyway, if you guys like this, let me know. Again, please hit that subscribe button. It helps a lot. Like the video, leave a comment. I also want to do this thing where I show like the cat of the week. I think that would be kind of fun because we have a lot of pets and maybe Shasta could be involved. So that's what we're going to do um, at the end of every video before I beat Bop out. So today, the pet of the week is actually Shasta because he's been here the whole time. We've just been having a really good time. He's really sleepy though. He let me trim his paw pads finally. They still need more done, but... I'm glad that he let me do a little bit because he's very sensitive there. When my cats are the pet of the week, I'll, like, carry them in, okay? I'll, I'll watch the, what they do every week, and maybe we'll, like, tier list them, like, Abby's Pyramid. That could be kind of fun. But, yeah, Shasta's pet of the week this week. Something fun to do at the end of the video. And I like showing you guys my pets, so. Thank you for watching this far. I really appreciate it. Please let me know if you've ever kind of experienced this, because I kind of feel alone in all this. And, anyway, I'll see you guys next week at Friday at 3 or Saturday at noon. I don't know. Bye! Peace out.